Welcome back to another video, everyone. And today I'm going to be talking about what to know about getting into powerlifting. So, if you like been thinking about going to a powerlifting gym, you've been thinking about competing, but you're just straight gym bro or gym gym girl, I guess. You're just commercial gyms. You're all that's already used to. So when you go commercial gyms, I was always at 24 when I was um, when I was a gym bro. I was like what 2000. I first started lifting weights and. It's been 14 years now, so 2000, no, it's been 13 years. Was it 2008? Dang, I think it's 2009, so 13 years. It's kind of 14 because you kind of count that whole, like, high school. It's four years, 9, 10, 11, 12th grade, you know? I say 14 because if you've been on a job from two, all 2014, or whatever year, that's one year. So 14 years, and that was 14 years ago. I was always at 24 for the most part. Like, for the most part, that was a gym I go to, like, play basketball, 24 basketball, and I liked that it was open all day. And just know, 24-hour fitness or whatever commercial gym you're going to is like a whole, that's a whole different dimension, universe, galaxy, planet from a powerlifting gym. You may not think so, but it is. I know because when I went to a powerlifting gym, I was like pretty informed for like a noob. But when I started becoming more into powerlifting, I learned, you know, the, the plates that are used. Like one, there's not going to be any rubber plates, there's not going to be hexagon plates you see at the gym and you deadlift and they start rolling around i hate those so much there's gonna be iron plates people call them pound plates but they're iron plates because everything is pound plates but first i'm talking about powerlifting that's the first topic so when you go there's iron plates and then there's calibrated steel plates that's pretty much all you're gonna see bumper plates for people do olympic lifts some people deadlift with those i don't know why um so there's, there's lots to say about that when you go in just know, etiquette, this is not, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about but the most people in powerlifting gyms and the owner. The owner, you're going to get to know the owner, that's another thing. Powerlifting gyms are usually going to know the owner. Commercial gyms, you don't really know anyone, like in charge, or we're just like the front desk, that's it. Maybe you see the manager, but they don't have to talk to you, they don't care to talk about you, it's not their place, they're getting paid salary, they don't care, it's not theirs, you know, trainers, anything, whatever. So, powerlifting gym, if you do not, this is the first thing, if you do not unrack your weights, if you leave, you bench, squat, deadlift, and you leave the weight there, Get ready, because you're, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear an earful from whoever, not just the owner. The owner might send an email, might, like, you know, kind of indirectly tell you or directly tell you, like, right in front of your face if they're there, or members. They might be kind of rude. They might be nice. It depends. I can't speak for all parts of the gyms. I've only really been to one. Uh, been to other ones, but I was really a member of one. Um, yeah, so you better own record weights, because that's a commercial gym theme that's so common to see. It's rude at commercial gyms, but it's common. Like, people leave three plates and they just benched or two, whatever, and you don't know if it's open or not. So if you see an empty barbell, usually it's open. Usually. Uh, probably the gym, you don't have to worry about that. That's the beautiful thing. Get ready for some screaming. People are going to start screaming. They scream before. Just know every power, this is every powerlifting gym. This is a fact, not an opinion. Every single powerlifting gym, you're going to hear some screaming. Whether it's up, 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 they say up on all lifts, squat bands are lift, because, you know, they want you to go up, because maybe you were thinking of going down, I don't know. Just in case they thought you might have wanted to go down, they're telling you to go up to get the lift, obviously. You're going to hear screaming before someone does a PR. They're going to slap themselves. They're going to get slapped in the back. You're going to see those three things 100%. You're going to see people sniffing ammonia. I've never seen that at a commercial gym. I've never seen it. I've seen it like online maybe, but I never saw it in person. And then I started doing it, seeing it, and then I started doing it. And <laughs> it's an interesting feeling. I really don't think that helps. Ammonia, I used to think, it just... What? It takes, it gives you five seconds, it pumps you up, and then, like, it takes you five seconds to, like, get to the platform, get ready, and then brace, and then lift, so, like, I don't really think that works, I think it's better to be calm, because not everyone does it, by the way, not everyone does it like it, so, I don't think that works, it just hypes you up, for sure it hypes you up, so, you're gonna see that, you're gonna see chalk everywhere, you see chalk on the benches, that's something you're not gonna be used to, um, you're gonna see some chains, people don't really use that, kind of not. Bands and chains, more for stretching. Bands and lifting, it's not too fun. You'd think it might be bands and chains, but not really. Powerlifters don't really use that. So be ready to see some gummy bears. A bunch of carbs, candies. Powerlifters like to carve up during their workouts and before, obviously. You're going to see some gummy bears, some Sour Patch Kids, a bunch of candies. People are going to be sharing, putting their nasty hands in the same bag. Their chalky hands, and you don't know whose bag it is. People don't care. They just put their hands in there, um, whether they know the person or not. Um, yeah, you're going to see chalk on weights, you're going to see chalk on, like, um, uh, what? Power racks, combo racks, that's another one, combo racks, and it's something you will not see at a commercial gym. I've never seen it. Combo rack is what they use at the meets, it's, you can squat in it and bench, and that's why it's a combo rack, because you can do that, and it's a just, like, it has adjusting heights for everyone, and you could just do it so quick. 
Like if you're sharing with someone at a combo, uh, a power rack or half rack at a commercial gym, you have to take it all off and it's such a hassle. Combo rack, you just put a pin in and you just lift it like pretty much like a jack, pretty much. Yeah, and it just goes up and down. I could be squatting with someone that's literally 6'4 and I'm 5'7. If we're the same strength, it's not a hassle because you don't even take off the weight. But if you're like a little bit off in weight, just take off the weight. I mean, no problem. If you're sharing, but it's meant for power, it needs to change the weights quickly and the heights for bench and squat. You can take out the bench, you can put it in the bench. That's not really anything crazy. So, just know, there's gonna be loud music, like music loud, loud, and you're gonna like, heavy metal music is a, for sure you're gonna hear that in powerlifting gyms, hip hop, heavy. People are gonna play their own music because there's like a, usually a tablet that people use and they're gonna play, you're gonna might get, that bothers a lot of people. I don't listen to music when I lift. Yeah, you might have seen it in a few of my videos, but it's something for the most part I don't do. Like, 95% of the time in 14 years, I have not brought my own headphones, earphones, or just put on my own music. Like, I don't need it. People need it. I don't. I don't need that motivation. It doesn't even cross my mind. I like, go to a commercial gym. That's one good thing. Commercial gym music sucks. People ask me, how do you listen to this when we're at commercial gyms? I literally don't hear it. I tell them, like, I don't even hear it. It's not even on. Like, literally, like, blank. My mind goes blank. This is all that matters, the weight. So this more feels important than music or the weight. So one good thing, you can hear good music. You can play your music, but you might fight with other people. They even ask, they just change it. Just ask. I always ask, you listen to this, can I change it? Just, it's so simple. People make it so hard. So one thing I hate is people say like kilos. Like this is heavier because it's kilos. You see competition plates, the ones I use, the red ones and the blue ones, the color-coded ones, Olympic uh, weightlifters use it and powerlifters, but the Olympic weightlifters use bumper plates. They're fatter, like way thicker. They're like four inches, calibrated steel plates. Most of them will be one inch. The red ones are 55 pounds, 25 kilos. People say kilos are every little pounds. That is not true. If you go to any country besides the United States, you're going to see kilo plates. They're not heavier. They're actually lighter. Because a 20 kilo plate is 44 pounds. So that's 133 on the bar compared to 135. And, well, 55 pounds are heavier. So 20 kilos are actually lighter. 15 kilos are 33 pounds versus 35. So they're not heavier. Especially if you're using the iron plates, because there's iron kilo plates and there's iron calibrated steel. The reason it feels heavier, even if it's the same weight as iron plates, like 45s you normally see, is because it's denser, they're one inch. And then the, the blues, the 44s, are like 0.875 inches, not even one inch. So they're denser, they're skinnier, closer to the bar, it's hard on deadlifts for sure. And squat, I mean, technically iron is harder on squat and bench. So the, the farther it is out from you, the harder it is because you're in the center and you're going. I don't know, up and down. This is the way it is on squat and bench. So not gonna get too much into that, but people always think kilos are heavier. I always hear that. It bothers the living shit out of me. Kilos are heavier. Kilos are heavier. Those are heavier because they're kilos. Kilos and pounds weigh the same. Like if I weigh 90 kilos, I'm not heavier than someone that's 198. It's the exact same thing. It, that makes no sense. That bothers that. I can't stand that. Just call them comp plates, competition plates. That's it. Because I always count them in pounds because this is murder. That's why. So if it's 55 and there's three reds on there and you're using an Ohio power bar, that's 375. Three 55s, three reds, that's 375. Unless you have a collar, it's 386 because the collar is only five and a half. Each, that's 11 pounds. But if it's okay. Next thing, I was just going to get to squat types of bars. That's something I did not know. I didn't know what a deadlift bar was. I didn't know what a squat bar was. I didn't know those existed. And then I knew it. I found out that there was a name for it, but I didn't know it was a difference. Deadlift bar, the most common one, is USPA uses them, that's a federation, United States Powerlifting Association. They use squat bar, well, depending on the weight. So the heavier guys, squat bar, they will use squat bar. Lighter people use the power bar. So power bar is just a stiff bar. There's Texas power bar, Ohio power bar. Ohio power bar is pretty much better. But the squat bar weighs 55 pounds, 25 kilos, and it's 32 millimeters. So it's pretty thick on your back. Most barbells are 28, 29 millimeters. So it's thicker, and it's 8 feet versus 7 feet. Power bars, there's a Texas power bar, Ohio power bar, and there's a lot. There's a Lico, there's Kabuki, there, there's so many power bars, it doesn't really matter that. But Texas power bar, usually you'll see those in USBA, that's 28.5 millimeters. Ohio power bar is 29 millimeters, that's just the diameter when you hold it. And the tensile string, tensile string matters a lot, like a deadlift bar, it's 27 millimeters, so it's skinnier to hold, versus an Ohio power bar, USAPL uses that United States of America powerlifting, yeah. They use Ohio Power Bar for all three lifts, or illegal. That's usually what they're going to use. Um, so 29 millimeters is thicker to hold, 2 millimeters thicker than a deadlift bar, and the deadlift bar bends. And the Ohio Power Bar does not bend, it's stiff. So I've been using the Texas Power Bar as a stiff bar because I don't have an Ohio Power Bar and I didn't want to buy it. So that's better than nothing. It's better, better than nothing. And I'm 
doing hook grip, it's a huge difference from 27 millimeters and 28.5. So pretty much the bars. Now your bars. Don't squat with a deadlift bar. Don't bench with a squat bar. Don't you know power bar? You can do anything with the power bar. It's fine. But if you're gonna do Olympic lifts, use an Olympic bar. That's usually the rogue ones that spin because you're gonna be cleaning and you're gonna be snatching. Because you know you'll see Olympic lifts with power. I mean, it's not common, but you'll see them. So don't don't use the wrong bar. And yeah, I mean, don't. I mean, people kind of do it. But that that one weird press, I don't do it. So it's like JM press, I think it's called, with the safety squat bar. The safety squat bar, when you put it here, and you don't have to hold it. You hold it here, you don't have to. And people like, dude, that's a tricep one. When you go like that, they bench like that. Don't bench with a safety squat bar. People do bench with a duffelo bar. Duffelo bar is the curved bar. It's just curved on your back. It feels great if you have some shoulder problems for a low bar. So yeah, know your bars. That's pretty much it. Don't call kilos heavier than pounds because that does make that makes zero sense. Comp plates are not heavier than pounds either. They're iron. They're dense. But they're more accurate for sure. Calibrated steel, it's like calibrated to the like exact weight. So it's usually the exact weight. And iron can weigh iron plates, the 45s and 35s, whatever, those can weigh like 47, they can weigh 42, 41. So that's kind of why people will say they're heavier. That's part of it. I'll give them that. But other than that, it's not heavy. It's just dense. So, other things to know about powerlifting, if you're going to compete, that's a big one. Let's just say you want to compete, or you know someone wants to compete. Just know, when someone's competing, good etiquette in a power, in a power lifting gym is, if they're competing, you got to give them priority to the calibrated plates and to the combo racks. That's how it goes, because they're getting ready for a meet. That's how it was at the gym I went to, and I would assume that's how it is everywhere else. It's just common sense. It's rude to take up the calibrated plates, especially if you're a noob and you never compete in the combo rack, because you know they're going to be using the combo rack in the meet. They're going to be using the calibrated plates and the bars. So that doesn't mean if you were there first, give it up to them. No, but let them work in. And don't be rude. Like powerlifting gyms, even commercial gyms, like people act like they own what they're using. You can let someone work in. Like there's no problem, unless like people think it's a hassle if you're already squatting 500 pounds. Like I got to take everything off for you. That's different, obviously, but if you're just warming up, you're just starting something, just be somewhat courteous, save them the rat. But especially if they're getting ready for me, you should give them priority. And that's usually how it goes. You see someone in a singlet in a powerlifting you meet, the singlet that wrestlers use, Olympic weightlifters use, uh, powerlifters, <laughs> that's just pretty much the one piece uniform they have to wear. That means they are about two weeks out from me, two weeks or less out from me, maybe a month, but a month is pretty serious. Two weeks out from me. Really give them priority because they're not messing around. If they're wearing a singlet, they are there for business. So, next thing, talking. I cannot stand talking part of the gym. That's one reason why I left and why I'm in my garage. Part of the gym, people talk like no other because it's a community. Remember, it's not like a commercial gym where no one really talks. Some people talk in commercial gyms, yeah, there's some small groups, but part of the gyms, you're usually going to know everyone at the same time you go. If you go at 5 p.m., you're going to see the same people at 5 p.m. Any gym. 5 a.m., 5 p.m., 10 a.m., or if you go different times, you go night or morning, you go night people, and you're going to know morning people. Don't spend your time talking. Like, powerlifters like to rest a lot as it is. A lot of powerlifters rest 20 minutes. They won't admit it, but they do. Some rest more. I don't know. And they get carried away talking in there while they're resting. It's like, well, I'm resting anyway, and I'm going to go really heavy. And if it's really heavy, you got to rest about 10 minutes. I don't care what I do. But some people say, fuck, you're going to rest 10 minutes. Like... You gotta be superhuman to rest five minutes for a really heavy set. If it's a single and it's heavy, you are most likely resting 10 or close to 10. I say 7 to 12 minutes. But usually just to give yourself the edge, you need 10 just to focus more. Because you gotta get in your head whether you listen to music or not. You gotta just get ready. You know, don't think too much. Obviously, you gotta get in your own head and get in the zone. That's what I meant to say. So, don't spend your time talking. I see part of your squat bench deadlift. Squat bench deadlift takes long. It's gonna take about four and a half hours. Whether you do, if you do accessories, forget it. You're taking six hours. Like, no, forget it. And if you're doing top sets too, like a top single, top triple, and then working set, squat bench and deadlift, I promise you, you will take very minimum four hours. And if you rest, like, the adequate amount, don't like speed through a squat bench deadlift. That makes no sense. But yeah, some people say you take three and a half. But that's very hard to believe. But four, you're going to take long if you squat bench deadlift. So just know you don't have to squat bench deadlift. You can just squat. I've been doing that recently because I always think, Squat bench deadlift, it's important. We need endurance. You're gonna be squat bench deadlifting in a meet. But just know in the meet, it's easy. Like, meet day is easy compared to the gym because you're only doing nine reps. Three on squat, three bench, three deadlift. Unless you're setting a record, you would do a fourth attempt. The warm ups are pretty easy. It should be easy. Your warm ups, you shouldn't kill yourself. But you're only doing nine reps. Meet day is easy. It just takes long. And sometimes you get tired because you're there all day. Maybe you didn't eat right. Maybe the water cut didn't go right. So, 
back to meets when you're warming up just know if you're a very particular warm up like the way you warm up is very particular that that is not gonna work like it could, just know i've been in nationals I've, I've done seven meets nationals was one and states was another those are the big ones those people will not mess around they're gonna be rude not rude they're gonna be very blunt and to the point and they need a way and they don't mess like they need to hurry because some people are stronger than you you're gonna see there's always someone strong they're gonna need higher openers but usually most people jump they go one plate two plate three plate four plate and you'll see blues in the warm-ups blues are 44 pounds that's all you need to know compared to the 55s that will be on the platform usually you will see 44s or some iron plates it's rare to see some reds that's very rare i've, I've had it literally once so what i'm saying is if you're the kind of guy that like warms up with the 135 on anything squat bench deadlift and then you're like oh i want 185 now just know they're gonna go two plates and they're gonna have to take everything off for you and you're gonna slow everyone down i have been that guy kind of not exactly but kind of and they were strong on me they were doing bigger jumps so it was a hassle that's also why it's good to have your handler if you have a handler all handlers are someone that helps you put the weights on and weights up in the meet so you don't get tired of but, and they're there to help you and speak up for you. I mean, you gotta speak up for yourself, honestly, but yeah, it's good to have a handler. I've gone alone a lot of times and it's harder, but there's, powerlifters are pretty nice for the most part, but you get some douchebags. It's, it's happened to me, I almost got in a fight at nationals. <laughs> I mean, didn't get in a fight, but you know, this guy was giving me attitude because his lifter, I don't know, I was there way before that, so I don't know why they're giving me attitude. There's eight racks, use all the racks you can. There's usually a blue platform and a red platform, like at the bigger meets. On the red side if you're on the blue they say you're not supposed to they don't know they're not gonna find out they're not checking i promise you as long as you have a wristband on you're fine that day i should have gone to the red side or another platform i, I don't know why i stayed there but i was there first like you know i don't have to leave if anyone's gonna leave he should have gone somewhere else so just know people will rush you and you're very inconvenient if you're the kind of guy that takes small jumps in your arms because everyone's gonna be doing one two three four five i promise you that they'll be doing big like a uh, big uh, jumps on their warm-ups probably gonna be strong even if they're not strong just you know, tr don't be that guy. You get ready now in the gym to take bigger jumps in your warm-ups. On the platform, who cares about that? In your warm-ups, I mean, because you're going to be warming up with five people usually. Usually five people to a rack or a deadlift um, platform when you're warming up. So, yeah, don't be that guy. So, no. Another thing, dating. Man, I've seen this in a lot of powerlifting gyms. I think that's not a good idea, in my personal opinion. Don't shit where you eat because... I'm not saying it doesn't work for everyone, but for most people I see it not working because they're gonna see the girl that you're dating or the guy you're dating, they're gonna see you talking to other girls or other guys, vice versa, and then they're gonna get jealous, and then, you know, you're gonna have to be with that person only, you can't have fun. You could have fun if you go alone, but then if you don't, if you go, like, alone and without that person, you're, like, messed up now because you didn't wait for them. So, just know, feelings get involved, it's emotional, there's other guys looking at your girl, that's a fact, like, no one can tell me otherwise on that one, there's other girls looking at your guy, they're gonna see that, they're gonna get jealous. Just know that that could go wrong. I'm just throwing it out there. If your girlfriend goes to a commercial gym, not saying cheat, I'm not saying cheat, but if your girlfriend goes to a commercial gym or boyfriend, whatever, that's actually kind of better because you have your time to focus on you and talk to whoever you want to talk to just during that time. Because you're gonna talk in a power lifting and you're kind of rude if you don't talk because everyone knows you. It's like the military, everyone knows you. So just know you can't just go in and not talk to anyone. That's like really rude. But I mean, no one's gonna tell you. So, don't date at a powerlifting gym. Like, seriously, don't do that. Or date another powerlifter that goes, like, you know, across town or another city. Like, that, that's really good advice. I really think so. I've never done it, so I can't relate. But I've seen people do it, and that's why I don't do it. So, that, that that's actually pretty important. I was going to say, that's not really what I was going to talk about, but that's pretty important. I have so many more things I want to say, because you learn so much when you get into powerlifting, when you go to a powerlifting gym. Um, just know, lifts are going to be called accessories. Like, you know... Dumbbell lifts are accessories, RDLs are accessories, anything that is not squat bench deadlift is an accessory. Get used to hearing that. Never, 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 never. Like, this is like probably the number one problem. Don't look at Larry Wills, don't look at Russell Ori, don't look at SSJ Bob, don't look at your favorite powerlifter who is straight out pro, competes in another country, like worlds, you know, they compete in Europe most of the time, and they're back national meets in the top three, top one. Do not look up to those guys and think you're gonna be like them. You can look up to them, whatever. If you're looking at their form, you're looking at whatever, some techniques, some strategies, but just know you're not going to be like that. Like, what I mean is, if you have beginner strength, like most people like me to this day, or like when you're new, you're not going to go, like everyone thinks like, man, this is probably almost every powerlifter I've ever met thinks this, and this really bothers me. 
I never say anything because I know I will be that guy if I say something. I'm like the, the negative Nancy guy. So if you, like, you're, you're a squat, and like, this is say your squat bench, the, the, your squat's like 457. Don't think like in three months, you're gonna compete again. Three months is usually the right amount of time you, you can you use to get ready for a meet. It's usually three. Some people do longer, like some people take like a year. Like I've been in a while, it's been February last time I competed. But I'm not in that mode to compete right now, I just wanna get stronger. But what I mean is three months is usually like a prep, for the most part, like for fighters, boxers, MMA, and powerlifting. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but three is pretty, it's like a sweet spot. Six can be another one, just know. One meet from to another, you're not gonna add like 300 pounds to your total. It's just, that is, if you saw your favorite lifter do it, like SSJ Bob is a great example. That guy is this, one of the strongest human beings on earth. It's like straight up, because day one he was strong, and now he's just unbelievably strong. Don't think you're gonna be like that. I used, like, I didn't think it. Like, I just thought that was dumb, like from the beginning, because everyone's genetics are different. But I have friends who always say, Larry Wills can do it, SSJ Bob can do it, Russell can do it, so I can do it. Yeah, I just remember a lot of the best powerlifters, like top 10, top 5, top 3, I'm not saying names. It's a fact a lot of them are on steroids. I met our PEDs, whatever. I met some that aren't even that strong when they're on PEDs. So imagine the top ones. So if you're not on PEDs, you're not enhanced, you're not um, natty, like what makes you think you're going to be like them? Just throwing it out there. Whether you're natty or not. So there's natty, there's not natty guys, unnatty, who are enhanced. They can't even do it. So what makes you think you do it? Just worry about yourself. Focus on your numbers. Just know you may go through a plateau like I'm going through. Not saying you're like me and you're weak and you're gonna go through one, but you may. There's gonna be a time you're gonna hit a plateau. I've seen most of the people I know go through plateaus. It just happens. It's not that you're weak, you just can't get stronger yet. Or you slowly get stronger. Just like bench. Bench is a bit, just know bench, most people plateau on that one. Most people plateau on bench and they will be stuck for a long time. Just know. I know someone, not saying his name, he's at well, he's been like at 424, 435 was the most he's done on bench. He's been at 424 for about, I think like seven years. It's been a while, just know. That's like probably his, obviously he reached his threshold, his genetic ceiling, but a lot of people, get, they reach it sooner. You know, it's just hard for them to, to get stronger. And then eventually they do. Every single powerlifting gym and probably commercial gym, but powerlifting gym you're gonna hear, sumo's easy. Sumo's easier, conventional's harder. That is true for most people, not all, but I mean, this is how I look at it. I think sumo's easier too. I really do. But I have more fun when I do sumo. I compete conventional. I've always done conventional. I'll have blocks of sumo and I'll do both conventional and sumo two different days. I don't want to do it the same day because I'll get tired. To me, sumo's fun, more fun. And it feels like a stretch compared to a lift. People like it because it's not a lot of stress on your back like conventional. You don't bend over so much. But people hate it because the range of motion is smaller and you don't have a long way to go and your legs are way out there. Obviously, you look like a sumo wrestler. But, I, I don't lift conventional. The most I've done is 523.6. It was pretty easy, but if someone does sumo 600 and I do 523.6, I'm 100% going to say they're stronger because I can't do that sumo, right? My sumo, it's stronger than my conventional, like instantly off the bat. So that shows that it is easier, but it's not easy. You can't just discredit someone for being stronger on sumo and that it's easy. It's, like, oh, well, it's always like the cop out. It's easier, so if you did it conventional, you wouldn't be as strong as me. But that's not true because a lot of sumo people are stronger than the conventional people at their own lift. So what I'm saying is you can't discredit Jamal Browner for deadlifting a thousand pounds sumo. That doesn't make any sense because he can do a lot on conventional too, like 900 plus. He's done 950, probably more. So he's not that far off on conventional. But sumo versus deadlift, like just get over it. Like just get over that argument. Get over it. You're just jealous because the sumo guys are stronger. I've never been jealous of a sumo guy being stronger. If he's like way stronger, I'm gonna go with he's stronger than me. Not, oh, it's sumo, it's easier. That's always what I hear. But I don't hear like, oh, but he's still strong compared to me. I never hear that. Or if he did a conventional, he'd probably still be strong. That's what I say. Sumo guy's stronger than me. If I see a sumo guy, my 523, puny 523.6 deadlift, conventional, and I see someone do 688 sumo, I'm not gonna be like, oh, well, that's easy, it's sumo. That's a hundred and what, 65 pound difference? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So, if they're strong on sumo, they're stronger than you, most likely. Unless it's like the same, then you could probably use that argument. If someone did 523.6 like me on sumo and I did conventional, then we could say it, or if they're a little stronger. But for the most part, sumo guys are gonna be strong and stop being jealous of that. Okay, so the last one, this is 100% the last one. Wilkes and dots. Pretty much all that really means is Wilkes, dots. It's how strong you are for your body weight. So the 74 kg guys, they always come to mind. 
they weigh 163 and they're all stronger than me. So I can't tell them it's easy for them because because they're lighter than me. They always say that, no. Their Wilkes is good because they're lighter than me, that's for sure, but they're still stronger, so that's not a good argument. So there's a 163 pound guy who's squat 600, bench 450, deadlift close to seven, probably, yeah, they probably deadlift seven, like the best ones, the best, best ones. So people think on the opposite, the flip, flip side of the coin, if you like me, 198 guy or 100 kg guy, which is 220, that means you weigh 220. If that like, okay, for example, 163 guy, if their total is 1500, that's really strong. Or even 17, that, that's just like strong, strong, strong. But if like a, two, a 220 guy, yeah, 220 guy, let's just say he weighs 210, he's in the 220 weight class. Someone weighs 210, that's 47 pounds heavier, and they do, let's just say 1500 lighter guy, 163, and then the 210 guy does like 1700. Just know the heavier guy still lifted more weights. Yes, his wilts is small, uh, lower, obviously. But the one who lifts more weight is usually going to be the stronger one. Even though, yeah, they're lifting a lot for their weight. Especially the 144 guys. There's, oh, there's some guys with 144 that are real, way stronger than I'll ever be in my wellness dreams. Especially at that weight because I'll never weigh 144. But, like, people see Ray Williams, like the 300-pound plus guys, and think, oh, well, they're doing 2,000 because they're way bigger than me. It's like, it's still heavy for them. Just know. Not because they're way bigger than you or way heavier. It's easy. It's still, they're still stronger, first of all. Their Wilkes is lower in dots. But just because you're heavier and you're barely stronger, about 200 pounds, doesn't mean you're less impressive. That pretty much sums it all up. So just know you're going to see some snacks, some gummy bears. People are going to be putting their hands in there. Get used to know your bars. Know your bars, your deadlift bars, squat bars. Don't, don't use the wrong bar. Do you do the wrong lift, like squat with a deadlift bar, deadlift with a squat bar, whatever. You know, calibrated plates, comp plates. You know, get used to the gut. If someone's getting ready for a meet, let them use them. Combo racks too, base combo racks. Kilos are not heavier than pounds, man. This gracious, I hate when say that. Don't date at a powerlifting gym, just summing it all up. Um, Wilkes does not mean someone's stronger than you because they're lighter or you're weaker because you're heavier. I really don't think that's true. Um, sumo, deadlift, get over it. If someone's stronger than you, sumo, just get over it. They're stronger, is it? Especially if it's like 100 pounds, they're stronger. Um, unless it's close. Unless it's close, I'm going to give it to the convention. I do conventional because it's more functional to life. We do con conventional, we tear our shoes, you know, we sit on the toilet. We're usually doing conventional in life. Alright, that, that's it for the video. That sums it up. That's pretty much it. So know these things when you go to part of the gym. Educate. Oh, and obviously, unrack your weights. Never never do that to part of the gym, whether it's dumbbells or plates. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. See you next week.